Hi everyone. So we are still reading the book Wonder. We are still in part one. We're going to start with the chapter called Paging Mr. Tushman. I would have been more nervous about meeting Mr. Tushman if I'd known I was also going to be meeting some kids from the new school. But I didn't know, so if anything, I was kind of giggly. I couldn't stop thinking about all the jokes Daddy had made after Mr. Tushman's name. So when me and Mom arrived at Bircher Prep a few weeks before the start of school, I saw Mr. Tushman standing there, waiting for us at the entrance. I started giggling right away. He didn't look at all like what I pictured, though. I guess I thought he would have a huge butt, but he didn't. In fact, he was a pretty normal guy. Tall and thin, old, but not really old. He seemed nice. He, took, he shook my mom's hand first. Hi, Mr. Tushman. It's so nice to see you again, said Mom. This is my son, August. Mr. Tushman looked right at me and smiled and nodded. He put his hand out for me to shake. Hi, August, he said, totally normally. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hi, I mumbled, dropping my hand into his hand while I looked down at his feet. He was wearing red Adidas. So, he said, kneeling down in front of me so I couldn't look at his sneakers, but had to look at his face. Your mom and dad have told me a lot about you. Like what you have, like what have they told you? I asked, sorry, honey, you have to speak up, said mom. Like what, I asked, trying not to mumble. I admit, I had a bad habit of mumbling. Well, that you like to read, said Mr. Tushman, and that you're a great artist. He had blue eyes with white eyelashes. And you're into science, right? Uh-huh, I said, nodding. We have a couple of great science electives at Bircher. He said, maybe you'll take one of them. Uh-huh, I said, though I had no idea what an elective was. So, are you ready to take a tour? You mean, we're doing that now, I said. Did you think we're going to the movies? He answered, smiling as he stood up. You didn't tell me we were taking a tour, I said to Mom in my accusing voice. Augie she started to say it'll be fine august said mr tushman handing his hand out to me i promise i think he wanted to he wanted me to take his hand but i took mom's instead he smiled and stared walking towards the entrance mommy gave my hand a little squeeze though i don't know if it was an i love you squeeze or i am or an i'm sorry squeeze probably a little of both the only school I had ever been inside before was Via's, when I went with mom and dad to watch Via sing in spring concerts and stuff like that. This school was very different. It was smaller. It smelled like a hospital. Nice Miss Garcia. We followed Mr. Tushman down a few hallways. There weren't a lot of people around, and the few people who were there didn't seem to notice me at all. though. That may have been because they didn't see me. I sort of hid behind Mom as I walked. I know that sounds kind of babyish of me, but I wasn't feeling very brave right then. We ended up in a small room with the words Office of the Middle School Director on the door. Inside, there was a desk with a nice smiling lady sitting behind it. This is Miss Garcia, said Mr. Tushman, and the lady smiled at Mom and took off her glasses and got up out of her chair. My mom shook her hand and said, Isabel Pullman, nice to meet you. And this is August, Mr. Tushman said. Mom kind of stepped to the side a bit so I would move forward. Then that thing happened that I've seen happen a million times before. When I looked up at her, Mrs. Garcia's eyes dropped for a second. It was so fast, no one else would have noticed since the rest of her face stayed exactly the same. She was smiling, a really shiny smile. Such a pleasure to meet you, August, she said, holding out her hand for me to shake. Hi, I said quietly, giving her my hand. But I didn't want to look at her face, 
so I kept staring at her glasses which hung from a chain around her neck. Wow, what a firm grip, said Miss Garcia. Her hand was really warm. The kids got a killer handshake, Mr. Tushman agreed, and everyone laughed about my hand, my above my head. You can call me Mrs. G, Miss Garcia said. I think she was talking to me, but I was looking at all the stuff on her desk now. That's what everyone else calls me, Mrs. G. I forgot my combination. Mrs. G, I need a late pass. Mrs. G, I want to change my elective. Mrs. G's actually the one who runs the place, said Mr. Tushman, which again made all the grown-ups laugh. I'm here every morning at 7.30, Miss Garcia continued, still looking at me while I stared at her brown sandals with small purple flowers on the buckles. So, if you ever need anything, August, I'm the one to ask, and you can ask me anything. Okay, I mumbled. Oh, look at that cute baby, Mom said, pointing to one of the photographs on Mrs. Garcia's bulletin board. Is he yours? No, my goodness, said Miss Garcia, smiling a big smile. Now that was totally different from her shiny smile. You've just made my day. He's my grandson. What a cutie, said Mom, shaking her head. How old? In that picture, he was five months, I think. But he's big now, almost eight years old. Wow, said Mom, nodding and smiling. Well, he is absolutely beautiful. Thank you, said Miss Garcia, nodding like she was about to say something else about her grandson, but then all of a sudden her smile got a little smaller. We're all going to take very good care of August, she said to Mom, and I saw her give Mom's hand a little squeeze. I looked at Mom's face, and that's when I realized she was just as nervous as I was. I guess I liked Miss Garcia when she wasn't wearing her shiny smile. Jack, Will, Julian, and Charlotte we followed Mr. Tushman into a small room across from Miss Garcia's desk. He was talking as he closed the door to his office and sat down behind his big desk. Though I wasn't really paying much attention to what he was saying, I was looking around at all the things on his desk. School, cool stuff, like a globe that floated in the air and a Rubik's type cube made with little mirrors. I liked his office a lot. I liked that there, was, that there were all these neat little drawings and paintings by students on the walls, framed like they were important. Mom sat down in a chair in front of Mr. Tushman's desk, and even though there was another chair right next to hers, I decided to stand beside her. Why do you have your own room, and Mrs. G doesn't, I said. You mean, why do I have an office, said Mr. Tushman. You said she runs the place, I said. Oh, well, I was kind of kidding. Mrs. G is my assistant. Mr. Tushman is the director of the middle school, Mom explained. Do they call you Mr. T? I asked, which made him laugh, which made him smile. Do you know who Mr. T is, he answered. I pity the fool, he said in a funny, tough voice, like he was imitating someone. I had no idea what he was talking about. Anyway, no, said Mr. Tushman, shaking his head. No one calls me Mr. T, though. I have a feeling I'm called a lot of other things I don't know about. Let's face it. A name like mine is not so easy to live with. You know what I mean. Here, I have to admit, I totally laughed because I knew exactly what he meant. My mom and dad had a teacher called Mrs. Butt. I said, Augie? said Mom, but Mr. Tushman laughed. Now, that's bad, said Mr. Tushman, shaking his head. I guess I shouldn't complain. Hey, so listen, August, here's what I thought we could do today. Is that a pumpkin? I said, pointing to a framed painting behind Mr. Tushman's desk. Augie, sweet, sweetie, don't interrupt, said Mom. You like it, said Mr. Tushman, turning around and looking at the painting. I do, too. And I thought it was a pumpkin, too, until a student who gave it to me explained that it was actually not a pumpkin. It is, are you ready for this, a portrait of me. Now, August, I ask you, 
Do I really look that much like a pumpkin? No, I answered, though I was thinking yes. Something about the way his cheeks puffed out when he smiled made him look like a jack-o'-lantern. Just as I thought that, it occurred to me how funny that was. Cheeks, Mr. Tushman. And I started laughing a little. I shook my head and covered my mouth with my hand. Mr. Tushman smiled like he could read my mind. I was about to say something else, but then all of a sudden I heard other voices outside the office. Kids' voices. I'm not exaggerating when I say this, but my heart literally started beating like I'd just run the longest race in the world. The laughter I had inside just poured out of me. The thing is, when I was little, I never minded meeting new kids because all the kids I met were really little too. What's cool about really little kids is that they don't say stuff to try and hurt your feelings. Even though sometimes they do say stuff that hurts your feelings, but they don't actually know what the, what they're saying. Big kids, though, they know what they're saying. And that is definitely not fun for me. One of the reasons I grew my hair long last year was so that I like... was that I like how my bangs covered my eyes. It helped me block out the things I didn't want I don't want to see. Mrs. Garcia's Mrs. Garcia knocked on the door and poked her head inside. They are here, Mr. Tushman, she said. Who's here? I said. Thanks, said Mr. Tushman to Mrs. Garcia. August, I thought it would be a great idea for you to meet some students who'll be in your homeroom this year. I figured they could take you around the school a bit, show you the lay of the land, so to speak. I don't want to meet anyone, I said to Mom. Mr. Tushman was suddenly right in front of me, his hands on my shoulder. He leaned down and said very softly in my ear, It'll be okay, August. These are nice kids, I promise. You're going to be okay, Augie, Mom whispered with all her might. Before she could say anything else, Mr. Tushman opened the door to his office. Come on in, kids, he said, and in walked two boys and a girl. None of them looked over at me or my or mom. They stood at the door looking straight at Mr. Tushman like their lives depended on it. Thanks so much for coming, guys, especially since school doesn't start until next month, said Mr. Tushman. Have you had a good summer? All of them nodded, but no one said anything. Great, great, said Mr. Tushman. So guys, I want you to meet August, who's going to be a new student here this year. August, these kids have been students at Breacher Prep since kindergarten, though of course they were in the lower school building. But they know all the ins and outs of middle school program. And since you're all in the same homeroom, I thought it would be nice if you got to know each other a little before school started. Okay, so kids, this is August. August, this is Jack Will. Jack Will looked at me and put his and put out his hand. When I shook it, he kind of half smiled and said, "Hey," and looked down really fast. "This is Julian," said Mr. Tushman. "Hey," said Julian, and did the same exact thing as Jack Will took my hand, forced a smile, looked down fast. And Charlotte, said Mr. Tushman. Charlotte had the blondest hair I've ever seen. She didn't shake my hand, but gave me a quick little wave and smiled. Hi, August, nice to meet you, she said. Hi, I said, looking down. She was wearing bright green Crocs. So, said Mr. Tushman, putting his hands together in a kind of slow clap, what I thought you guys could do is take August on a little tour of the school. Maybe you could start on the third floor. That's where your homeroom class is going to be. Room 301. I think Mrs. G is room 301. Mrs. Garcia called out from the other room. Room 301. Mr. Tushman nodded. And then he could show and then you could show August the science lab and the computer room. Then work your way to the library and the performance space on the second floor. Take him to the cafeteria, of course. Should we take him to the music room? Said Julian. Good idea, yes. And Mr. Tushman, said Mr. Tushman, August, do you play any instruments? 
No, I said. It wasn't my favorite subject, on account of the fact that I don't really have ears. Well, I do, but they don't exactly look like normal ears. Well, you may enjoy seeing the music room anyway, said Mr. Tushman. We have a very nice selection of percussion instruments. August, you've been wanting to learn to play the drums, Mom said, trying to get me to look at her. But my eyes were covered by my bangs as I stared at a piece of old gum that was stuck to the bottom of Mr. Tushman's desk. Great. Okay, so why don't you guys get going, said Mr. Tushman. Just be back here in, he looked at Mom, half an hour, okay? I think Mom nodded. So is that okay with you, August? He asked me. I didn't answer. Is that okay, August? Mom repeated. I looked at her now. I wanted her to see how mad I was, but then I saw her face and just nodded. She seemed more scared than I was. The other kids had started out the door, so I followed them. See you soon, said Mom, her voice sounding a little higher than normal. I didn't answer her. The Grand Tour Jack, Will, Julian, Charlotte, and I went down a, hall, a big hallway to some wide stairs. No one said a word as we walked up to the third floor. When we got to the top of the stairs, we went down a little halfway a hallway full of lots of doors. Julian opened the door, March 301. This is our home room, he said, standing in front of the half-open door. We have Miss Pidosa. They say she's okay, at least for home room, I heard. She's really strict if you get here for math, though. If you get her for math, though. That's not true, said Charlotte. My sister had her last year and said she's totally nice. Not what I heard, answered Julian, but whatever. He closed the door and continued walking down the hall. This is the science lab, he said when he got to the next door. And just, and just like he did two seconds ago, he stood in front of the half-open door and started talking. He didn't look at me once while he was talking, which was okay because I wasn't looking at him either. You won't know who you have for science until the first day of school, but you want to get Mr. Holler. He used to be in the lower school. He would play this giant tuba in class. It was a baritone horn, said Charlotte. It was a tuba, answered Julian, closing the door. Dude, let him go inside so he can check it out. Jack Will told him, pushing past Julian and opening the door. Go inside if you want, Julian said. It was the first time he had looked at me. I shrugged and I walked over to the door. Julian moved out of the way quickly like he was afraid I might accidentally touch him as I passed him. Nothing much to see, Julian said, walking in after me. He started pointing to a bunch of stuff around the room. That's the incubator. That's big black thing is the chalkboard. These are the desk. These are the chairs. Those are the Burson burners. Bunsen burners. This is a gross science poster. This is chalk. This is the eraser. I'm sure he knows what an eraser is, Charlotte said, sounding a little like Via. How would I know what he knows? Julian answered. Mr. Tushman said he's never been to school before. You know what an eraser is, right? Charlotte asked me. I admit, I was feeling so nervous that I didn't know what to say or do except look at the floor. Hey, can you talk? asked Jack Will. Yeah, I nodded. I still really hadn't looked at any of them yet, not directly. You know what an eraser is, right? asked Jack Will. Of course, I mumbled. I told you there was nothing to see in here, said Julian, shrugging. I have a question, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. Um, what exactly is home room? Is that like a subject? No, that's just your group, explained Charlotte, ignoring Julian's smirk. It's like where you go when you get to school in the morning and your homeroom teacher takes attendance and stuff like that. In a way, it's your main class, even though it's not really a class. I mean, it's a class, but... I think he gets it, Charlotte, said Jack Will. Do you get it, Charlotte asked me. Yeah, I nodded at her. Okay, let's get out of here, said Jack Will, walking away. 
Wait, Jack, we're supposed to be answering questions, said Charlotte. Jack Will rolled his eyes a little as he turned around. Do you have any more questions, he asked. Um, no, I answered. Oh, well, actually, yes. Is your name Jack or Jack Will? Jack is my first name. Will is my last name. Oh, because Mr. Tushman introduced you as Jack Will, so I thought, ha, huh, you thought his name was Jack Will? Laughed Julian. Yeah, some people call me by my first name and last name, Jack shrugged. Jack said, shrugging. I don't know why. Anyway, can we go now? Let's go to the performance space next, said Charlotte, leading the way out of the science room. It's very cool. You'll like it, August. The performance space. Charlotte basically didn't, t didn't stop talking as we headed down to the second floor. She was describing the play they had put on last year, which was Oliver. She played Oliver even though she's a girl. As she said this, she pushed open the double doors to a huge auditorium. At the other end of the room was a stage. Charlotte stared, skipping towards the stage. Julian ran after her and then turned around halfway down the aisle. Come on, he said loudly, waving for, waving for me to follow him, which I did. There were like hundreds of people in the auditorium at night, said Charlotte. And it took me a second to realize it was, she was still talking about Oliver. I was so, so nervous. I had so many lines and I had all of these songs to sing. It was so, 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 so hard. Although she was talking to me, she really didn't look at me much. On opening night, my parents were all the way in the back of the auditorium, like where Jack is right now. But when the lights are off, you can't see, you can't really see that far back. So I was like, where are my parents? Where are my parents? And then Mr. Rexnick our theater arts teacher last year, he said, Charlotte, stop being such a diva. And I was like, okay. And then I spotted my parents and I was totally fine. I didn't forget a single line. While she was talking, I noticed Julian staring at me out of the corner of his eye. This is something I see people do a lot with me. They think I don't know they're staring, but I can tell from the way their heads are tilted. I turned around to see where Jack had gone. He had stayed in the back of the auditorium like he was bored. We put on a play every year, Charlotte, said Charlotte. I don't think he's going to want to be in the school play, Charlotte, said Julian sarcastically. You can be in our play without actually being in the play, Charlotte answered, looking at me. You can do the lighting. You can paint the backdrops. Oh yeah, whoopee, said Julian, twirling his fingers in the air. But you don't have to take the theater arts elective if you don't want to, Charlotte said, shrugging. There's dance or chorus or band. There's leadership. Only dorks take leadership, Julian interrupted. Julian, you're being so obnoxious, said Charlotte, which made Julian laugh. I'm taking the science elective, I said. Cool, said Charlotte. Julian looked directly at me. The science elective is supposedly the hardest elective of all, he said. No offense. But if you are never ever been in school before, why do you think you're suddenly going to be smart enough to take a science elective? I mean, have you ever even studied science before? Like real science? Not like the kind you do in kits. Yeah, I nodded. He was homeschooled, Julian, said Charlotte. So teachers come to his house, said Julian, looking puzzled. No, his mom taught him, answered Charlotte. Is she a teacher? Julian said. Is your mother a teacher? Charlotte asked me. No, I said. So she's not a real teacher, said Julian, as if that proved his point. That's what I mean. How can someone who's not a real teacher actually teach science? I'm sure you'll do fine, said Charlotte, looking at me. Let's just go to the library now, Jack called out, sounding really bored. Why is your hair so long, Julian said to me. He sounded like he was annoyed. I didn't know what to say, so I just shrugged. Can I ask you a question? He said. I shrugged again. Didn't he just ask me a question? What's the deal with your face? I mean, were you in a fire or something? 
Julian, that's so rude, said Charlotte. I'm not being rude, said Julian. I'm just asking a question. Mr. Tushman said we could ask questions if we wanted to. Not rude questions like that, said Charlotte. Besides, he was born like that. That's what Mr. Tushman said. You just weren't listening. I was so listening, said Julian. I just thought maybe he was in a fire too. Jeez, Julian, said Jack. Just shut up. You shut up, Julian yelled. Come on, August, said Jack. Let's just go to the library already. I walked towards Jack and followed him out of the auditorium. He held the double doors open for me as I passed by. He looked at me right in the face, kind of darling daring me to look back at him, which I did. Then I actually smiled. I don't know. Sometimes when I have the feeling like I'm almost crying, it can turn into an almost laughing feeling. And that must have been the feeling I was having then because I smiled almost like I was going to giggle. The thing is, because of the way my face is, people don't know me very well. Don't always get that I'm smiling. My mouth doesn't go up and the corners my mouth doesn't go up at the corners the way other people's mouths do. It doesn't it just goes straight across my face. But somehow Jack Will got that I had smiled at him and he smiled back. Julian's a jerk, he whispered before Julian and Charlotte reached us. But dude, you're gonna have to talk, he said this seriously, like he was trying to help me. I nodded at Julian and Charlotte caught up to us. We were all quiet for a second, all of us just kind of nodding, looking at the floor. Then I looked up at Julian. That word, supposed, supposedly, by the way, I said, what are you talking about? You said supposedly before, I said. I did not. Yeah, you did, Charlotte nodded. You said the science elective is supposedly really hard. I heard you. I absolutely did not, he insisted. Whatever, said Jack. Let's just go. Yeah, let's just go, agreed Charlotte, following Jack down the stairs to the next floor. I started to follow her, but Julian cut right in front of me, which actually made me stumble backward. Oops, sorry about that, said Julian. But I could tell from the way he looked at me that he wasn't really sorry at all. The deal. Mom and Mr. Tushman were talking when we got back to the office. Mrs. Garcia was the first to see us come back, and she stared smiling. She stared. She started smiling her shiny smile as we walked in. So, August, what did you think? Did you like what you saw? She asked. Yeah, I nodded looking over at Mom. Jack, Julian, and Charlotte were standing at the door, not sure where to go or if they were still needed. I wondered what else they'd been told about me before they'd meet me. Did you see the baby chick? Mom asked me. As I shook my head, Julian said, Are you talking about the baby chicks in science? Those got donated to a farm at the end of every school year. Oh, said Mom, disappointed. But they hatched new ones every year in science, Julian added. So August will be able to see them again in the spring. Oh, good, said Mom, eyeing me. They're so cute, August. I wish she could have she wouldn't talk to me like I was a baby in front of other people. So August said Mr. Tushman, did these guys show you around enough or do you want to see more? I realize I forgot to ask them to show me the gym. We did and we did anyway, Mr. Tushman, said Julian. Excellent, said Mr. Tushman. And I told him about the school play and some of the electives, said Charlotte. Oh no, she said suddenly. We forgot to show him the art room. That's okay, Mr. Tushman. But we can show it to him now, Charlotte offered. Don't we have to pick Via up soon? I said to Mom. That was our signal for me, for me telling Mom if I really wanted to leave. Oh, you're right, said Mom, getting up. I could tell she was pretending to check the time on her watch. I'm sorry, everybody. I lost track of time. We have to pick up my daughter at her new school. She's taking an unofficial tour today. This part wasn't a lie, that Via was checking out her new school today. The part that was a lie was that we were picking her up at school, which we weren't. She was coming, ho she was coming home with Dad later. 
Where does she go to school? said Mr. Tushman, getting up. She's starting Flock Faulkner High School this fall. Wow, that's not an easy school to get into. Good for her. Thank you, said Mom, naughty. It'll be a bit of a schlep, though. The A train down to the 86th, then cross town, bus all the way to east side, takes an hour that way. But it's just a 15-minute drive. It'll be worth it. I know a couple of kids who got into Faulkner and loved it, said Mr. Tushman. We should really go, Mom said. Mom, I said, tugging at her pocketbook. We said goodbye kind of quickly after that. I think Mr. Tushman was a little surprised that we were leaving so suddenly. And then I wondered if he could blame Jack and Charlotte, even though it really, it was really only Julian who made me feel kind of bad. Everyone was really nice. I made sure to tell Mr. Tushman before we left. I look forward to having you as a student, said Mr. Tushman, patting my back. Bye, I said to Jack, Charlotte, and Julian, but I didn't look at them or look up at all until I left the building.